What's up, pretty gang? It's your favorite nail tech, Peaches, back with another video, and I know y'all see it, right? Just wait for the transformation I'm about to give to y'all today because we're focusing on a natural overlay. I did this client earlier, we did a soak off and she wanted to go back to an overlay. And so this is basically just application. I'm gonna show you guys how I square the nails out, explain to you the process. This is pretty much the final result. And of course, before we go ahead and get into it, I wanna make sure you guys click the link in the description for discount codes, my Amazon storefront. You guys, don't forget I have the option for you guys to become a member on my channel. About nine to 10 bucks a month, exclusive content. Uh, follow me on Instagram, subscribe, all that good stuff. And also you can cancel at any time if you do decide to become a member, like you're not stuck for life. So I, I did wanna just point that out there um, for those who wanna become a pretty young thing, okay? okay. So we are using Young Nails Core White as well as Young Nails Monomer. And basically when I do overlays on the hands, I call this mini length. Okay, I feel like they're very, very cute. I actually do this more often than you would think, probably like uh, a couple times a month. And the key is to make it thicker than the consistency or like the thickness of nail polish, but not as thick as a regular acrylic hand mint enhancement okay so you can see basically what I'm doing here is I'm grabbing a bead that's large enough to pretty much cover the nail and once I let it set and get to the consistency I like I work with it and I play with it and I mold it and shape it when I first started doing natural overlays well I kind of have always done them just not was the greatest at them once I realized that you don't have to even have any length at all to square a nail it's all in how you work that brush okay I know I say this working that brush, getting your ratios of liquid to powder right. But y'all, I'm trying to tell you, once you learn those two things, you unlock everything. You can do anything, all right? So I pretty much put down a layer to, you know, get the base together. And then if there's too much sheerness, cause this is a milky white color. I use uh, Young Nails Core White as milky white. So some areas can be a little more sheer than others. You know what I'm saying? So I'll go back in and add a little bit of something for substance, but you do not need a real apex for overlays because, the, okay, realistically, you have an apex because that is the strength for your nail enhancement, your artificial nail enhancement. You have a, a area that is a weak point at the natural nail free edge as well as where the tip meets, and you need the apex there and some strength so that way it decreases the chance that that natural weak point is going to break. When it's a natural overlay, you don't have a weak point of natural nail meets fake nail. So that's why you don't really need too much strength. So we're focusing mainly on the coverage of the color as well as the shape of the acrylic. Um, for those of you who are familiar with dip powder, dip is no different than acrylic, uh, an overlay, let's say that. Um, it's just the form of which you are putting the acrylic on the nails okay do not get confused do not let anyone tell you that dip is not acrylic dip is organic blah 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 it's all methyl methacrylate if you look on the back or at the methacrylate i should say right and so they have very very similar ingredients look we just read the back of the packaging um the main difference between dip powder is it's a lot softer so with filing you're gonna find that you probably are filing your product off and um, it's just very much thinner layers. I find it hard to work with. I don't like doing dip. And I also feel like it's weird that people keep dipping their fingers in the same jars over and over. Unless you have like individual little plastic disposable like shot cups or something like that, but to each their own, okay? So as you can see, for the most part, I'm taking each nail as a whole instead of like breaking it up and if i am breaking it up it's just for like coverage sake but you can see the main point of this when you are doing like a mini length when you are wanting to square something out without giving it that length is to pretty much just it's the size of bead that you're using and the texture because if your bead is too loose now i do want to point out this finger um it was previously amputated and it was able to be reattached Okay, this client is, she's become a regular, she's still newer, like, this is only like, what, the third time that I'm seeing her? Third or fourth time? Um, yes, so, this one has to be done a little bit differently, um, and it does look a little bit differently, but honestly, I try to give it the same appearance as the others to the best of my ability. But anyways, uh, once you realize that the whole main problem of doing natural overlays at a short length, I used to think, well, I can't square it out if you don't have enough length. That's not true. 
It's the manipulation of the product. You need to just have enough product and the right texture to manipulate. Because as you can see here, as the product stiffens up and I'm playing with it, I'm not overworking it, right? There's some areas I'm letting it set in some areas while I'm kind of playing with it in others. If it's too loose, too watery, it's never gonna set with enough time for you to actually be able to square something out and keep it that way. Um, most people are gonna come in with a rounded shape, especially when they're first starting their overlay. Um, and honestly, a lot of people's nails naturally grow in, you know, like a more rounder shape, more like, kind of like an M&M, right? And this is the method that I would use for, for on anybody though, like when their nails are this short and they're first starting their overlay journey. And over time, after probably about two months, um, between two to three months of growth, you won't have to do it this particular way you'll have enough nail to be able to just shape the natural nail okay sorry that was a mouthful um so i you know i didn't want this video to be too long but this application is in real time for me personally i book overlays at about an hour and a half of time although realistically if someone's not getting um any like bling charms or you know anything spectacular it's only going to take me about 45 minutes and that is from when the client walks into the door until they pay and leave so application on this hand this is real time so that took about eight minutes um you know if she had a little bit more nail it probably would have took less but i'm having to like not only apply but build and shape and mold rather than hey i have a guideline so um you can gather probably took about eight minutes per hand so that's 16 minutes of application and then filing came up around mm, i want to say probably like another eight minutes so i will say um in total just the set by itself without the soak off or anything like that i would say that probably took um right under 30 minutes and we did a soak off so yeah from the time she came in and we started to soak off to the time she paid and leave. Um, this whole appointment was only an hour and a half. Now her previous set was the birthday set that I just recently did. Um, it had the Capricorn symbol. So if you wanna watch that, that's still there on my channel for you to watch. And she had a great time with it. And that was pretty much that. She's ready to go back to this normal length. This is what works best for her. And she's trying really hard to grow out her nails. Um, so yeah, the thumb is a little bit bigger. So sometimes I split the thumb into more than one bead, sometimes not. But the goal of it is when you're doing an overlay on the hands, it's pretty similar to how I do overlays on the, the toenails, especially when they're like this type of length. And what you think of it as like, you know what? The way you do an overlay on toenails is pretty similar to how I would do it on hands. So once you get comfortable enough with your brush, and I'll tell you what, your brush is the main, your main tool. Um, it's gonna get you through a lot because do you see how I'm patting and pulling? Look at the manner at which I'm not only applying the acrylic, but I'm working it. That is something that I don't see nail techs explain to you guys very often. A lot of times they're like, well, you just apply it and blah, blah, blah. I don't see a lot of people do many other techniques besides actually swiping it, which this is not necessarily a swipe. This is more like a pat, a pull, a tap. Um, like I always say, swiping is for, um, Swiping is to get rid of excess product when you're doing those like very dainty um, swift motions. But realistically, what you want to do is a lot more see pulling, tapping, guiding. I say that a lot because um, that's a word that I feel like more people should use. However, I understand everyone who is trying to teach you guys how to do these processes is not that may not have the vocabulary to explain thoroughly to match the visual that they're showing you if that makes sense and i feel like i kind of in a, a good spot to where like i really understand the mechanics and the process behind a lot of these things and so i kind of have the words to explain that to you guys um i know i'm kind of long-winded but a lot of you guys say that i'm thorough and that you appreciate it so i'm just stick to keep explaining how i can okay so with this i just want to show me filing around the cuticles and stuff like that now me filing under the nail i'm not really filing the natural nail at all if you can see the angle at which i do file i'm just making sure it's not bulky at the tip and i try not to file too much underneath because at the end of the day these are real nails and so you don't want to just have a permanent deep ass c curve 
in someone's real nails because once they get soaked off it's gonna have like an effect on them not necessarily negatively but like it's just gonna be a little weird and so here we go now her pinky nail i did not put anything on it because it was longer but it was split horizontally smack in the middle i don't know if you guys can't see it well as well as vertically down the center so even though it's cut and it looks fine it's still split but i cannot cut it because um it's still really attached to her but she is a person who picks at her nails and that's why she gets overlays so it can help her not bite and pick but um i just didn't want to put any product on there and she starts picking and peeling at it and then it rips her whole nail basically so i just told her you know you can come back in two weeks when it's grown out a little bit more and she said that's fine because she needs something on the rest otherwise she's gonna pick them off so when you guys do see the um like the final result videos and stuff like that it might look like you know she's got dead skin still and stuff now she didn't book a manicure okay and i'm not in the business of doing too much extra outside of what i'm already supposed to do so if there's something you didn't book i'm not necessarily going out of my way to do certain stuff you know for you and things like that but yeah because she is a picker she definitely does have some areas of like rough skin dryness and then also i did not have her wash her hands because i didn't have any soap um so i was just like you know what we're just gonna do something light and i'm gonna, I'm gonna work with what i got so you know there's a little bit of extra dust in the end results which is fine which is funny because someone pointed that out in the last video they was like i can see the dust and i'm like girl i know like i'm the one who took the photo you know so hey sometimes stuff happens man sometimes you got a next client everything it is not like perfectly whatever all the time and i feel like people understand that so i'm just pointing it out there in case somebody else or the same person decide to point it out like i see it you see it we see it we're gonna move on so once again i just decided to show this hand i mean i'm about to show the next hand but like this step is pretty crucial um this is gonna help you further get the shape and i didn't explain anything too much here because you're gonna see the full hand on the other side and but i just wanted to keep both clips in because i don't often show too many overlays on my channel but i do them again more often than you would think hold on okay i'm sorry i thought i heard something so here we go as you can see look at how i'm filing when you're doing natural overlays on real like mini length like this as i call it you definitely should treat it as acrylic toenails and as you can see the way in which i'm filing for this length is very similar to how i would do acrylic toes and it works out perfectly i'm gonna be honest filing the sidewalls like this is honestly the best hack i have for you a lot of people with like who do overlays they ignore filing the sidewalls up there because like oh they're so short you mainly focus on the tip you need to do this still because you can see how much of a difference it makes in the end now i will say on mini length your application needs to be pretty spot on because the thing about it is the nails are typically pretty close to the hyponychium and which is the skin underneath your uh nails right like underneath in the front and so you don't want to cut anybody and if you file too hard like this you could cut somebody and also you don't want their hyponychium to poke through the enhancement i know you've seen where like sometimes someone might have short nails or like you soak your nails off and like your hyponychium in the front is really long i don't particularly want her to walk out like that and so the best way to do that is have a really crisp application i know it's not going to be as clean as if her nails were actually all this this i don't say this long because the thing is i'm not lengthening her nails per se but one just like toenails once you have that perfect square shape once all the corners are there it automatically looks like longer you see what i'm saying so yeah that's the best advice i have for you i hope this video kind of helped anybody who's been struggling with doing short nails or overlays natural nails because honestly when people want a, such a mini length like this i always tell them like girl just do an overlay like you don't have to have hardly no length at all especially because it takes down time in the process so i would say start getting comfortable with that i mean obviously some people don't do short nails or overlays or anything but if you want to get into it this type of length it makes it so much quicker and easier when you stop cutting tips this short because at a certain point it's like oh my gosh i just wasted my time so i feel like this could be useful for a lot of people this is also a great visual even for acrylic toes because it's the same type of techniques but honestly in a different angle 
Um, so I really hope this video helped some of you guys out there who might be struggling on this particular topic or honestly who just didn't have nothing else to do and stumbled upon my video. I appreciate all the views in the comments nonetheless. We're so close to 5,000 subscribers. I'm pretty excited. Um, it's My birthday is coming up soon. So like I said, if you are not a member now, that's okay. But I would encourage you to become a member soon for February and March because I will be including birthday footage okay as some members only videos and lives and things like that i've got some valentine stuff that i want to upload and honestly i'm looking to connect with you guys more i'm doing more mentorship things and it's okay if you don't feel like you want to join right now i completely understand but eventually we're gonna get there so i did include i found a way to include a link in the description box for those who are on your cell phone who want to join i know for some people the join button pops up some don't so i included it in the link here is the shape this is what it looks like up close okay and um i really hope uh if you haven't subscribed already that you do subscribe and enjoy my content and as always i will see you guys in the next one